Alright, this is Crusader Kings 2, and I'm Flying McGuffin. Now, I wanted to give a little bit of an update on Hearts of Iron 3. It's not done, and I basically have not been working on it that much. And to explain why I have not been working on it that much, you have to know a little bit about modding Hearts of Iron 3 first. I want to take a few minutes to do this before I get started, because a lot of people are probably wondering about this, about why I'm, I'm, I don't have it ready yet. Um... Hearts of Iron 3 has got, like, twice as many provinces as any other ones in the game, and it's very highly scripted. Uh, any other Paradox games, I should say. Um, it's very highly scripted, and basically the entire game is based on what events happen in the game. And most of them are events that are always set to happen, rather than having random mean times to happen. Which means that I have to come up with an entire scenario for the entire war. Last time I could really pretty much fit it into the framework of the existing thing, because I was basically playing as England, um, without Canada, and with a little bit more of Africa, and that was basically it. And a little bit of France, I suppose. But the end result was really just a relatively normal scenario playing out in Europe, and the war starting as it does and ends as it will with the European, you know, great powers duking it out, fighting Germany and Russia and all that. Well, I don't even have that framework to work on now. And, uh, now I've, you know, been hearing more stuff about Hearts of Iron 4, which I, I'm a little bit more excited about. Uh, so... Yeah, I just have not... It's kind of a bad time of year for me to be doing this anyway. Um, and a lot of rather heavy stuff has come up in my life. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't want to talk about that. It's not stuff that should be uh, interfering with it, because it's not like it's taking up any time. But it's just not conducive to having good creative juices going. And I have a lot of ideas that I think I can work with, although I don't know, and then other people have given me ideas of what I can do. And I know it's, it's probably disappointing, but uh, I just can't work on it right now, and it'll probably be a couple months before I can really even, at, at least at this point, uh, the way I feel is I can't work on it right now, so a couple months maybe, maybe even, uh, I could start working on it tomorrow, but as of right now at this moment, I haven't recorded or anything for a month. And that doesn't really mean anything. It's a hobby, you know, do whatever you, I want when I want, but it's, it's something that I feel like I should be doing, because it's fun when I'm doing things that are fun. And people enjoy it, I think. And uh, I'd like to put some more stuff up. So that's Crusader Kings 2, which is by far my favorite of the Paradox games. Where Hearts of Iron 3 is definitely my least favorite, simply because it doesn't have the crazy randomness the other ones do. So, um, before I played as Ireland and Persia, um, Ireland was before even uh, Old Gods came out, so it was a relatively normal 1066 Catholic start, relatively vanilla start of the game stuff when it first came out. And then the Old Gods came out, set the state, start date back, and I played as the Karen uh, Satrapy. Who is... Oh, they got a fancy new flag. It's a much more difficult start now that the Rajas of India have come out since... So, I've played as... Um, that? That looks like a terrible place to play. <laughs> um, the major thing, which expanded the map over here, um, is very... Uh, new to me. I haven't really played a whole lot of it. Before, the, the further east you could go is the Safarids, uh, um, basically into uh, Afghanistan, that sort of thing. Um, and there's new religions and stuff. Religions! But I'm not necessarily sure about playing it. So every time I've played before, I've been playing as a top level dude. A man with no master. Uh, and this time I thought, well, you know, we did, we've done a lot of stuff 
well, two games, where I played as the the master of my own destiny. Destiny. And I thought, well, maybe this time I should play as Vassal. And I probably want to kind of start as a duke. Uh, I probably want to start as a duke rather than a count, because um, I think it would take too long to get the ball rolling on a count to make the game interesting. I'd rather start right away doing interesting stuff, at least very, in the very near future, within a generation or two. And of course, we're going to be starting with a random guy, and because uh, I don't know of any things. So, for, uh, the way I see it, we've done a cat book. And we've done a, a weird religion. Uh, Zoroastrians kind of have some traits that aren't all, actually all that good. Uh, but, since we're going to be doing a lot of politics, I figure, well, what brings to mind? I mean, the very word Byzantine. Uh, kind of evokes politics. So let's play as a Byzantine vassal. It's got a lot of intrigue and instability, and it's just something you could take things to the max in. And without the HRE to play around with, and without a strong France to play around with at the beginning of the game, I think that's our best shot. And I want to play as the, ten the 867 start, just in case I want to play a longer game. I don't know if this is going to be a full game, but I just wanted to play around with it. And I think I... Nope this guy. The Duke of Calabria. Now he, he has a random start. Uh, he's got a vassal, so he only really controls one province, but solid opportunities if I can get a good roll. No whammies, no whammies. I can tell that since we can control one of one province, I maybe did get a whammy. <laughs> Let's check him out. Well, at the very least, he doesn't have a penalty to his... Uh, he does have a penalty for utility. That... Uh, man. Okay, well, we do start unmarried, so we can fill some of our deficiencies, so to speak. I don't know why we're over here. So the Byzantine Empire starts at war with the Aglabids, who... What is your technical... Sultanate of Africa. Who owns Sicily. And they're trying to get this part of Sicily. Now, our current situation with our neighbors is that there is purple to the northeast and southwest we can't really do anything with. But there's also the Muslims in Sicily, who we're currently at war with, so we can't actually take advantage of that. There's Muslims to the north, who, in my uh, experience, will usually get war declared on them by Italy to take Apulia, which will leave them with Salerno. Salerno up here is Italian Catholic. They're pretty strong, though actually, so we don't want to be fighting them. Uh, plus, we'd need to get claims and all that, so so our best chances for expansion are either in Toronto or in Naples or Capua. But since Toronto borders us, I think we'd have a better chance of that. So, before we even get started doing anything else, we are not married, so we should pick the thing to get married. I'll probably just make this one thing, one video, because uh, it's like early in the morning. <laughs> the Princess of West Francia, you say? Huh. If she does, a good thing. Eh, hell yes. Okay. And I'll gain prestige from it. That's nice. I like to see that. We have no family members. Our heir is the Emperor of Byzantium, who is actually quite good. He's got a Norse lady fan. And a few children's. Born in the purple, eh? Good for him. So, 
we are in the du jour kingdom of Sicily, which includes all of this. Uh, and to get that to get that kingdom title, we're going to want to do so. Obviously, we are in the du jour empire of Byzantium. Not sure why the kingdom of the Empire of Italy only includes Italy, and why it doesn't include Sicily. Uh, probably because the Byzantine stuff doesn't. It can't be in two at once. For for that for that matter, why isn't Italy the jure part of the Byzantine Empire? I ask of you. Anyway, um. Well, that's, you know, Legacy of Rome style stuff. Okay, so we have a, a good marriage lined up. So we have our Magistros, who is our Chancellor. I think we might as well put him to fabricate claims in Salerno. Our Strategos, who is our uh, Marshal. Having trained troops in Regia. Our Sacalarios. Who's our um, steward? I don't know why I kind of derped out there. He's not our child, so we'll have him collect taxes. Our Mysticos, who's actually quite good, is our um, spy master. We'll have him discover technology. I have our Ecclesiarch, who is our court chaplain. The only thing he can do, because we have the religion we desire here is to research culture tech as there's not really a pope for us to talk to. Rule unmarried, law and succession, okay, so. Now, we want to preserve our troops. We start with a decent amount. Almost 600. So to do that, we want to keep them away from the greedy hands of the Emperor. So we can get 13 gold. That's not enough for me to not get 100 prestige. So we are now allied with the King of France. Um, which is nice. What is the thing for West Francia? Why is this guy... Not... Is it because he's Frankish and not French? I don't know. I have no idea what the deal is with the names of these older stuffs. So we fulfilled our mission. Let's get a new one. Having a son is a good idea. So we're 29 and we're okay. Okay, so looks like the idea I had has already come into play. How many troops do they have here? 737. Once Italy breaks that stack, I want to declare war on them. Is Italy declaring? Yeah, Italy did declare war on them. They almost always do. I noticed they had troops pulled up, so I assumed that had, that had happened. I don't care about that. Okay. Okay, so how is this war going down here? Now the Aglubids are the ones that declare war on the Byzantines, and they have this huge stack here, but the Byzantines have a lot more troops than that. And they always lose this war, I've never seen them win. 
Alright, you can see here there's already a numeric advantage. No, not a numeric advantage, but definitely already a strategic advantage for the Byzantines. As there are mans here too. The rise of the Shia. Oh. This is a random mean time to happen thing. The schism at the heart of Islam dates back to its earliest days. Shias, forcing them into uh, the majority of Sunnis, have long persecuted the followers of Ali, the Shias, forcing them into hiding. Partisans of Ali took it to his uh, look to his descendants for leadership, but they are forced to keep their ancestry secret. Now, though, the Shias are mobilizing strength behind a boy they claim to be Ali's rightful heir and imam. Other Islamic jurists claim that the boy is clearly a fraud. But to his followers, he is the person they have been waiting for, and now they flock to his banner. Sultan Imad Tulnid Belba, blue blue, this guy is getting shit in the face. As you can see the Shia Caliphate is rising against them. This could happen to these guys as well, but it didn't. Okay. It would not be a good idea for me to, to declare war on them now. I basically want to wait until they have no other option. I want them to lose this battle here. Cool. More reinforcements. Now these troops, obviously, I can't declare one so, or war on somebody while I have troops raised. I'm just preventing the emperor from taking them. Well, and actually, I, I don't think he will at this point. No. I don't think he'll raise any more since he's got uh, that. So there's no reason to have him sitting around. Okay, that is what we wanted to see. I don't want to do that. I want to declare war on this man. Or Salerno. Oh, oops. Touched the bottom of my screen. As a matter of fact, since I waited until that event happened, since that event did happen, I should say, I have even more troops now. Unfortunately, we don't have enough troops to siege here. I was hoping that the, the levees would be smaller, or the garrison would be smaller, but I guess not. What do we got here, by the way, mercenaries available? Anything cheap? at the moment. I could hope that the Emperor will come help me. Doesn't look like it. Hmm. So France is already at war with them. So it's the Count of Bourget. See whether you're at war. No, he's not. Well. 
Oh, apparently I can siege now. Cool. And it looks like Salerno is helping me now. Thanks, Salerno. Uh, why did he get leadership of the siege? And I'm gonna kill your dudes. Jerk. It's killing more of his dudes than my dudes, so. Oh, okay, I do, I do control it. Cool. And I'll just let it siege out now. So we, this is his wife? Nice. Yeah, I got the money for that. So we're in a pretty good position here. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So that's pretty much what I was what I was gambling for. It's a little bit of a gamble. Hey, cool. Nice. Everything's coming up. Calabria. Or whatever we are. Calabria. Give me your Milans. Excellent. Okay, so give this church away. Hmm. I don't necessarily care about that, but why? Oh, fuck Byzantine Empire. Whatever. I've got the wrong type of holding, but I'll keep the city for now. I'll probably, I'm probably losing more. Uh, I'm probably losing money for that, but I'll just keep it for a while. So we've gained a thing. Would this guy do this? No. So we're still not strong enough to take on Salerno. But, we are put in a much better position to do so later. Alright. And I should get that lady out of my prison. There you go, lady. Goodbye. Apparently she's still in my... No, she left. Okay. That'll go away after a while. Oh, you know what I should have done? Is I should have, um... Kept that title until I had a son. Whatever, it'll be fine. have a son or a daughter I guess I think that'll still be okay yeah agnatic agnatic we can still have daughters do stuff as long as the child survives into adulthood we're in good shape Ooh. war for silica where is this silica so here okay not something I can really participate in. Uh, if I approve it, the guy will like it. He will. It will probably follow through anyway. Carillos. Carillos. Took a pretty good name. Ooh. 
book without a title was pushed in my hands by a hooded man clad in midnight blue. Something was said, but lost in the confusion, the book was still there. So, hey, wait. Gain 20 piety, 20 piety and look at the book. Or you can get piety and prestige over time. I like this. Pieties. And we get the trait scholar because the secret within the book still eluded me after several weeks of intense study, waste of time, and wasted ink. The man couldn't be anything but a maniac, filling precious parchment with malarkey and incomprehensible symbols. I must be writing in that Greek I hear about. Wait, I, I would be able to read that. So I like pigs, puppet dogs, and books now, but I don't like people, and I tell them that. So, I think. Oh, fuck! What the hell? Well, that's not a good start, is it? No, it's not. Survive smallpox, little dude! You can do it! So, one might think hey, we can take this up. Actually, <laughs> I was just about to say, we could take this opportunity to declare on these guys, but they're actually still too strong. But they're not, because there's a huge revolt here. I don't think the Byzantine Emperor can actually help me though. So now, before it basically put a bunch of dudes independent of you, and now it just puts them in a big revolt. Um, which puts them at equal footing and at the top level so that they can have vassals. So there's a nominal leader of the, uh, of the revolt. Come on, little dude, survive, be betters, or have another kid, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Crusader Kings, too. Oh, you even kidnapped them. Magyar nomads, no more. King of the Magyars, Almos, has decided to settle down in the Carpathian Basin, making a new homeland for the Magyar tribes. So, Magyars are now the Hungries. Hey, cool, okay. Don't care. The other kid can die now. <laughs> it's a little bit harsh, but hey, it's medieval times. I don't care. Looks like the Abbasids nudged over a little bit as I watched. The Sephirids have gotten dominion over Persia. I'm about to. Ooh. The poor Karen's about to get owned. Awesome, we get more dudes. Hmm. Oh ho ho! Well, that's no good for my plans. That's a host. Hosts are bad news bears. I almost swallowed my tongue when a friendly courtier paid his respects to me. He thought I was displeased with him and left perplexed. I think I lost his respect. I lose two prestige. Damn it! Damn you, shy! I was giving me the bads. So I'm actually gaining money from, uh... Lucanian now. Tiberos! Hey! See, now I'm in Gablekind, so... Whatever. We'll just have to make them fight to the death. Or I'll have to get Croton, somehow. I don't really have any other vassals. This guy is... Is he anything to me? He's my... No? He's not. 
I could just imprison him. What's the odds on that? 44%. You know, this is the kind of stuff I do as a super liege. Let's just leave him be for now. You can't control it anyway. Ooh. The Emperor is inviting us to a grand fe feast in the Lychee. Why are you there? And he ap would appreciate my presence. We are not going to insult our Emperor. No, that guy died. See you new Strategos. That guy's okay. He's a battlefield terrain master. Heck yeah. Okay, go train troops. Rage on. He greets us warmly. Wine was served in the most delicious sense came in the kitchen. Thank you for having us, Emperor Man. I want the Emperor to like us for now. Oh, I didn't pick an ambition. Um, let's have him raise our intrigue. That seems like a good plan. We're gonna do politics. We're gonna need that. Basilius Basilios is, is... His name means... Basilius is the king. Does Basilios mean king, too? I don't know anything about Greek. It's time... It's time to begin the long way home. After the food, the entertainment, and the warmth, the real world suddenly feels cold and hostile. Will the, the feast be next? Will there be a feast next year? Gain five prestige. Nice. Speaking of which, I can hold these things myself, but I want to s wanted to save my money until I realized I had a lot of it. I keep forgetting. Okay, we have a level two castle here. That's nice. So we can't build anything there, basically. Lucania. We can build a castle walls, which is nice. I can also probably... Can I build a retinue? No. I have enough money, but I don't have enough dudes in my retinue cap. So I cannot do that yet. So I can do those events, I suppose. Um, as a ah, oh, that thing finally passed. There's a dude from a non. Ooh, a tithe. Nice. As a Christian guy, I can do hunts and stuff. In a temperate region. I think the arid regions can't do it. Um, I don't know why. There aren't any animals to hunt in deserts. Well, the emperor is being busy. I, I, I am glad that we have been able to contribute to the growth of the empire, though. So the next option would be to take this from this guy. If I have a valid claim on it, the, the emperor won't care if I declare war on him. I mean, he will, but he won't do anything about it. Assassins are a constant danger that every ruler must may have to face. To prepare, you have decided to expand the size of your personal bodyguard. Any would-be Duke Slayer. You to fight through them first. So follow me everywhere. I gain an intrigue. So I think that's a pretty good place to stop. We've gained a province. And uh, we're thinking about taking stuff away from this guy. But I don't think we need to do that. Watching our neighbor Salerno being chopped down by some foreign mans from a foreign land. Who is this guy? That man has no eyes. So clearly he has been blinded by some sort of Greek man. Because they're the only ones who can do that. Or maybe he was blinded in an accident or something. He's a weird guy from a weird place. But what I didn't want to see, which is crazy Norse adventurers. So that's nice. Crazy Norse adventures would be much worse. So, I will see you next time on Let's Play Crusader Kings 2. I hope people aren't too disappointed that I'm not working on Hearts of Iron 3, at least not at the moment. And I hope you like the idea of this.